Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I just finished filming a level two portable charger review and I'm in the city of Squamish where they recently installed brand new version three 250 kilowatt superchargers. So I decided why not go and do a review and just check out this new location because I've uh, not been there yet. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. The car right now is preconditioning the battery for supercharging. Um, and uh, we will be there very, very shortly. It's like four minutes away from where I am right now. So I'm hoping that the battery is gonna be nice and toasty. So we're gonna get optimal speeds, hopefully. But yeah, I've done a lot of CCS capable chargers, fast chargers, never done a Tesla supercharger review. So I thought, okay, I'm here. Might as well jump into it and get it done for you. So just for those people who are not Tesla owners, I just wanna show you guys how easy and simple it can all be. No fiddling with apps, no doing anything else, just driving up, plugging in and charging. But anyways, let's go get that done. Um, it's very close to here. And after that, uh, I'll give you my verdict and tell you if I like it or not. But spoiler alert, Tesla superchargers are always good. <laughs> all right, anyways, let's get on the road and get start charging. And just to show you guys, it says here, preconditioning battery for fast charging. I wish every car was doing this, uh, unfortunately. It's only reserved to a few right now, but maybe in the future we will have that capability um, with other cars as well. So anyway, just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, let's get on the road and start supercharging. All right, we have arrived 11 stalls free. There's one guy charging, I think. Brand new setup. All right, let's get charging. So with the Tesla, all you have to do is back into the stall. That's all you need to do. You back in. Wow, look at all these brand new superchargers everywhere. So all you do is back in, pretty easy. You've got sensors, you've got a backup camera. Well, the sensors are just on the older ones. The newer ones will just have cameras and yeah, we'll see how that goes. But anyways, then all you have to do is push the button, grab the handle, and that's it. Wait for it to turn green. When it turns green, there we go. Now it's green and off we go charging. If you don't believe me, let me jump in. And there we go. We are charging. <sighs> How easy that is. And right now we're pulling 123, 128, 136, 145, 155. 165, 171, 173, 174, 175. Can we go higher than 175 kilowatt? Let's go higher than 175 kilowatt. No, okay, and this says 15 minutes remaining just because I wanna to charge to 100, but let's, uh, let's lower that to something sustainable like 80, well, that's 75. Uh, the touch screen for this is very finicky. Let me just jump into the thing. So we're still 175 guys That is amazing. I mean the speed is just you know, oh 176 176 176 right now um, Yeah, I mean the speeds that you're getting car gets updated all the time and then You know, we're already you know At the top here of what we can do. Okay. There we go. I set it to 80 so it's gonna take us 25 minutes from, it was 14 to 80. 25 minutes from 14 to 80. This is why you buy a Tesla. This is why you buy a Tesla. Okay, anyway, let's uh, let's get out, explore a little bit, see what uh, what's happening in this charger here. Here we got one, two, three, three stalls. Then we've got this one, which is my favorite. Let's walk around. Oh, so much garbage. Somebody was drinking their white claws, honestly. And then this kind of stall is my favorite. So if you're pulling a trailer and you just wanna go nose in, cause you know, every other Tesla has to go ass in. But if you wanna go nose in with a trailer, then you're able to do that because of this one. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, five. Do we have one here? Six. Here's another trailer friendy. Seven. 
and eight. So we've got eight. Oh, this guy should be using one of those. I mean, if you're already driving in, maybe he doesn't know how to back up. And then the location is amazing too. I mean, you've got beautiful views, mountains. You've got the Home Depot over there. You've got Dairy Queen. What else? Sherwin-Williams paints here. You could have bought a bunch of companies having like warehouses and stuff. Let's walk in and see if uh, they have any other food options around here, but there should be. It's not even like you have to charge. Hey, sorry, you don't have to eat anything while you're charging a Tesla, it's so fast, but in case you wanna go grab a bite or whatever, there's a Domino's pizza, Sherwin-Williams paints, and well, you're gonna eat that. Dairy Queen here. Then there is a place called Mags 99, which is like Mexican food, but don't don't eat this one in Squamish. Uh, go to uh, Sunny Cheapas, that's the better one. What else you have? Noodle Box, uh, Cyrus Cafe or something, Chop Leaf, Indian Masala, and then that's the Mags 99. But like I say, they probably just like copied what the uh, what Sunny Cheapas did. So yeah, go to Sunny Cheapas fried chicken and Mexican food, definitely. I mean, the healthy option is the chop leaf, right? If you want health, Domino's or Dairy Queen. That's enough, I mean, it would be nice to have a Starbucks or something, but the cafe is there, so you can always get something from a local joint, right? Uh, maybe I can go and get a drink, see what they have, if anything good. But yeah, the views are beautiful. You've got mountains all around. Squamish is a beautiful place and a good stopover if you're driving between Whistler and Vancouver. Stop, recharge the car and recharge yourself. Let's go back to the car because we're already at 50%. Um, it obviously slows down after uh, 50%, but still, let's go back to the car so we don't have to pay idle charges. But yeah, this place is nice. Dairy Queen, I would say, is the winner for me here. So if you guys are charging, Go for an ice cream, go for maybe a burger if you want. Um, that's the closest one, just two minutes walking, I would say. Not even two minutes, a minute walking from the chargers. So we got 14 minutes remaining and we're charging at 71 kilowatt. State of charge is 55% and we're charging up to 80. Almost done, almost done. You know, this is always quick and painless. Um, I wish more, more, chargers work like this but unfortunately they do not so it is what it is we can't change anything unless um you know companies are willing to change and then just hear how much we need to pay i'll tell you the exact amount when i'm finished but yeah very very good spot i really really like it and uh awesome charging session definitely charging's finished so, how does one unplug? Simple. Little button, hold it. Take it out. That should close automatically. There we go. And then hang in there. And you're done. Simple, easy. Very, very easy. Um, yeah, great location. And we always have new cars coming in. Got a Model X, Model Y. They're all going nose first which is interesting. I guess they're jealous of the cars that have the charging ports up front, like my Kia Soul EV. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's move away from this and then give a little bit of a review. Not a review, what am I saying? Closing remarks, because we're done charging. Oh, by the way, let's see how much that cost us. So, the last one was $16.59 to charge from what, 14 to 80 in 25 minutes. So speed-based charging, awesome. Price, uh, a little bit on the high side. And then if we go into the supercharger location, we will know the pricing. So right now this is the busiest time. So charging fees are from 33 cents to $1.75 per minute. Idle fees are a dollar per minute. So. You can see here from zero to 60 kilowatt, we're paying 33 cents, 60 to 167 cents, 100 to 180, we're paying 110, and 180 to 250, we're paying $1.75. 
So we never re reach the $1.75 threshold with this car anyways. So the most that we're paying per minute is $1.10. And then as soon as we drop below 100, it's 67 cents. So there you go. You do your own math if it's worth it or not. Tesla superchargers, everybody knows they're good. For the most part, I would say that people online say 99% of them across Canada and the US work as advertised. Obviously there's some instances where they don't work, but there's always enough of them. Um, like in this location, 11 different stalls that if one doesn't work, you can always switch and go to the next one. So um, that's, that's the benefit, right? Like with Electrify Canada, for example, here in Canada, we get like four stalls, right? So if anything happens to two of them, then there's only two left. And then if those are taken or don't work well, well, then you're stuck, right? You got to charge anyways. So that's the biggest benefit. But for me, it's just the ease of use, right? Like for a lot of people, driving an electric car already means that they have to adapt to a different lifestyle. Um, but Tesla just makes it easy. All you have to do is just put in your credit card into the system, pull up to a supercharger, plug in, and then you're starting to charge. Your credit card gets um, charged for the money that you need to pay, and that's it, and you move on to the next one. Yeah, it's not cheap. I mean, it used to be, uh, but now with new pricing models and things like that, everything's more expensive. But still, you know, for $16, at least I know I will get a charge and it will take me 25 minutes. Whereas if I go to, God forbid, Petro Canada here in Canada, which I always had a bad experience with, it was going to cost me the same or even more. And then I'll be stuck at the charger for over an hour trying to charge because the speeds are so low, right? So there is always, you know, you get, you pay what you get for, you know, what am I trying to say? <laughs> you get what you pay for. There we go. Okay. English is hard. Um, so yeah, you know, overall, I think the only improvement here is for the people, if you're watching this and you're a Tesla owner, stop littering at the superchargers. Honestly, it's not hard to carry the garbage with you and put it into a bin when you see one. And second of all, Tesla should put some garbage cans. Come on. I mean, you know, I'm not asking for squeegees here. I wish we had squeegees to clean our windshields, but you know, maybe that's asking too much, right? Just put some garbage cans so we can put our garbage in the can. If not, then we're going to have littering all the time. And this is like, oh, I don't know. It just, it, every time I come to a supercharger, I always see garbage everywhere. I don't know why. So yeah, that's the only improvement. And Tesla should be putting more of the V3 superchargers 250s up because like I say, on a road trip, it's a godsend, you know? 25 minutes, enough time to go to the toilet, get something to drink, get some food like here with all the different locations. So anyways, that's it. That's my story. Love it. And I'm not even a Tesla fanboy or an Elon Musk uh, lover or whatever, you know? I don't put him on a pedestal, you know? He's not my, uh, you know, uh, savior or whatever. But honestly, I think that Tesla has done an amazing thing. And now with the way that they're gonna share their um, connected technology and hopefully some other companies will pick it up. Imagine driving a Kia and being able to charge at a Tesla supercharger, that'd be awesome. But anyways, that's it for me today. Thanks so much for watching. Um, hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to like it. If you didn't, well then dislike it. That's your choice. And I will see you in the next one. All right guys, take care and goodbye.